Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with some more Boomstick, boomstick Critique right at you. I uh, figured I'd go ahead and finally get my Candyman 2 review up and done. And this will be a quick one, this is a pretty easy review. Uh, just to jump into it, the problem with doing a sequel to a movie like Candyman is the whole, one of the big themes of the first Candyman is you don't know whether Candyman is actually real or not. You spend a lot of that movie trying to figure out is Candyman even real or is it just some like dude carrying around murdering people, some regular psychopath, or is it just a bullshit urban legend altogether. But if you've seen the first movie, you know Candyman's real. So problem one right there is how, how do you keep that suspense going? The answer is you don't. <laughs> Basically, Candyman 2 um, is really pretty much the same thing as the first movie. The only thing to add in this time is that Candyman is like after a person who is actually a descendant of his. Actually, the woman that he was with before he was murdered it was actually uh, actually was pregnant with his kid. And he and she had a kid. And the kid, you know, had kids and so on and so forth down the line, you know. And this is actually his descendant. So he wants to actually take a descendant of his own bloodline as his bride, which is weird. It's like an incest type thing. I, I don't know. I mean, that doesn't bother me. It's a horror movie. But it just seems weird for the character to do that. I mean, the problem with that is, is why even have the same type of plot line as the first one? Why even make it about uh, Candyman wanting a bride again or whatever? Or, or, or a woman again to take back to the afterlife with him or whatever? Because he was denied, you know, the love of his life or whatever. Why even do that? Why not just do a completely new story? Uh, have it to where someone is actually related to Candyman down the line, whether it be a man or a woman. And they call him and don't have it to where he wants to make him like his bride or whatever to take back to the afterlife with him. You know, do something completely different with it. Maybe they're, they're like keeping his name alive and his legend alive. Maybe they're actually helping him. Maybe uh, he's communicating with them from beyond the grave or something. Maybe they actually said his name because they learned about the legend. Find out they were related to him and they're actually spreading the word about him. And then somebody else in his bloodline actually wants to destroy him because, you know, they recognize that he's evil and they want to get rid of him. Have it be something like that, you know, an all-new story. Like they're keeping him, his, uh, you know, his power alive through his, you know, belief in him or whatever by spreading his name and his legend. And then somebody else in his family is wanting to get rid of him. You know, do something like that. Do something different. Why Why even have the same type of story over again? That's the, the two things with a sequel. Either A, you do something totally different, or, or I mean different, or B, you fucking uh, expand on the uh, ideas already in the first movie. This movie doesn't expand on the ideas of the first movie. It adds in the whole relative thing to Candyman, and then one other thing, which is Candyman's soul is actually trapped in a mirror that the love of his life, Caroline, had when he died, and somehow his soul was trapped in it, or went into the mirror, so that's how he's able to stay alive or whatever, and you know travel back and forth between the afterlife and Earth or whatever. But uh, other than those two little things, I mean, I mean, the mirror thing sounds more complicated when I explain it than what it actually is in the movie. They just kind of drop it in there in the movie. You didn't even really need it. Um, but other than those two things, I mean, there's really, it's kind of the same friggin' movie, almost, in a way. Just to start off with this movie, this is a pretty simple movie. You got the girl who's, like, related to Candyman. She says uh, Candy Corn's name, <laughs> Candyman's name, I mean. Uh, five times. It's actually five times, not three. In my first review, I said it was three, but it was actually five times you gotta say his name. But yeah, she says his name. Um, he appears. There's some, like, boy who's having nightmares of Candyman for some reason. For some reason, he's like keeps having nightmares of Candyman, almost like Candyman's communicating with him through his dreams or something. It's never explained. I don't know why it's in the movie. He actually runs off at one point in the movie, and the, girl's like, the girl has to look for him. To try to find him, and then she finds him, and he's like, I was looking for Candyman. And I'm like, why the fuck didn't you just go say his name in a mirror? Why'd you run off? I mean, well, I, don't, I don't get that shit. I don't get this character. I don't even know why he's there. It's almost like they just wanted another kid character in the movie, because at the end of the first one, the Virginia Madison in the first one had to save a baby, so they wanted to have a kid here for her to have, for this woman to have to protect. The actress who plays the main character in this movie, she's fine. All the actors are really pretty much fine in this movie. Her brother, though, the character of her brother in the movie, that actor's kind of weak. He spends... Uh, there's a couple people killed by Candyman. He gets blamed for the murders. He gets put in jail for most of the movie in like a holding cell. Um, as far as the killings go, they're not as good as the first movie. The best kill, most of them are just like kind of hooks to the back and then the person just falls over. The best kill in the movie is when the main girl's like husband gets killed by Candyman. He gets like lifted up on the hook and he's like bleeding. Uh, like and you can see the blood running down his shirt and stuff and his clothes. And Candyman like has the hook pushed out his ch uh, stomach 
and he like he's pulling it up like that. That's the cool death. That's the best death in the whole movie. And he like slings him down like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> That's the best death in the whole movie. Tony Todd is once again fine in the movie, but his lines aren't as good. They're pretty much just like repeats of the same shit he said in the first movie. Uh, he still says them good. They're okay. I mean, they're all right. But at the same time, it's like, eh, you've kind of seen this already. But Tony Todd's acting is still fine. The guy still deserves way more movie roles in high-profile movies. He's a great actor. Um, so pretty much it's the same thing as the last movie. Uh, Candyman's killing off the people that uh, is connected to this girl so he can make her feel withdrawn and hoping that she'll come to him, decide to join him because she doesn't have anybody else. The plan didn't work in the first movie, so I don't know why he would do the complete same thing here. But it's a slasher movie, though. you got to have deaths, so it doesn't matter. But uh, anyway, it's just weird that he would even kill off people of his family. I mean, like, people who are related to him. It just seems weird that he would even kill those people off. I know he's like a vengeful spirit who's like pure hate or whatever, uh, whatever you want to call it. So he's just killing people. But at the same time, he has a consciousness and he's able to think. It just seems weird that he would be killing off people who are related to him. Why not use them to spread his legend or something? I don't know. Do something else with these characters besides him just like icing off his own people that are related to him. Uh, it just seems weird that he would do that, kill people that are actually part of his bloodline. Which, he only kills the mom in the movie of the main girl because she doesn't actually believe in Candyman or she won't or she won't admit that she does, so he kills her out of the fact that she denies his existence, and she's related to him, so he kills her because of that, so you kind of got that in there, but at the same time, it just seems weird, sorry about that, but at the same time, it just seems weird that he would be icing, he would, he'd be icing off motherfuckers left and right that are related to him, it just seems weird he'd be killing off his own bloodline like that, I don't know, it just seems a little out of place, it just seems like if you're going to bring in like people who are actually related to Candyman, that you can do more with that kind of storyline than just like him hunting for a bride again and him killing people again. It just seems like you can do more with that than just having them having the exact same story and him just killing them again. I just think it would have been better if they would just done an all-new story. But one thing leads to another. She's actually pregnant by her husband before he was killed, so Candyman's going to get the child he never had back again as well. Um... Uh, one good thing about the movie is you actually see the flashback. You didn't see it in the first movie, but here you actually see the flashback of Candyman's death, and it's shot really well. But there's some CGI bees. There's a big giant bee storm that shows up. That's CGI that covers Candyman when they the bees sting to death or whatever. And so the CGI isn't isn't too good at first. And then at the end, when she takes the main girl takes the mirror and like busts the fuck out of it because it's like Candyman's path to the living world or whatever. She busts the hell out of it, and when she does that. Katie Man like turns into glass. It's kind of it's a neat idea, but the movie couldn't didn't ha exactly have like the special effects to pull it off. We're not talking like T2 special effects here style. So when he turns into glass and like starts busting or whatever, the CGI is a little wonky, not really that great. Um and another thing, I never really felt like Candyman actually needed a sequel. I mean I mean, the story of Candyman is kind of open and closed. I felt like Candyman didn't need a sequel, but at the same time, I wanted Candyman to have a sequel because I feel like that character could easily be like a new, like a, I mean, like a big franchise horror icon. As it stands, he only has three movies. I really think that character deserved more movies than just three. But as it stands, he only has three movies, uh, which pretty much makes it, you know, a Candyman trilogy. As far as this movie goes, it's two and a half stars. It's all right. It's an all right sequel. It is better than most average horror movie sequels. Um, but it's also not one of the uh, better horror movie sequels, but it's better, I mean, what I'm saying is, is it's better than most horror movie sequels that you would get, or most movie sequels in general that you'd get, really. It's average. It's uh, it's an average, It's an alright movie. It's average. It doesn't really bring anything new to the table, besides the mirror thing, and then the people who are related to Candyman thing, the movie really doesn't do anything with that, except repeat the same thing of the first movie over again her brother actually gets the main character's brother gets killed in the movie because a cop says Candyman's name and he gets killed in the holding cell or whatever or detainment room or whatever that the brother's in so he takes off running because he's freaked out and he gets shot down by the police and I'm like you dumbass why'd you take off running yeah, you should have known you were gonna get shot but I guess I'm but I guess you're supposed to be like well he's hysterical you know he's freaked out whatever but uh so he dies like that. You get to the end of the movie, she takes the she finds the mirror 
that supposedly has his spirit in it. She busts the fuck out of it. He evaporates in the glass. He blows up. Kind of a weak CGI type look. His death in the first movie was better. Although I do like the idea of him turning into glass and busting better in this movie. I, I mean, I like that idea in this movie better than like how he died in the first movie. Kind of like just in a fire or whatever. Um, I like that better, but the execution isn't as good because the special effects just aren't up to par with the idea that they're trying to they're trying to execute. And then you get to the end of the movie. The woman has, I mean, the main character has had the baby. It's a little girl, and she, you know, she walks off, leaving her in the room. And there's like a a mirror hanging from her, uh, like I guess whatever the fuck you call it, carousel, parasol thing or whatever. I don't know what it is that kids have, like hanging above her crib or whatever, a bed, and it's like twirling around. And she raises up and looks at it, and she starts looking in it, and she starts going, Candyman, Candyman. I'm like, this girl's like, well, like five. I don't, what was she, like, six, five or six, something like that, and I'm like, fucking even that young, they hear who Candyman is, I'm like, shit, and also, at the same time, it's like, this woman just narrowly escaped death by Candyman, and she's fucking dumb enough to have glass and mirrors, mirrors in her house, even where her kid is, I mean, why would she take that chance after everything she's been through, and at the same time, it's like, kind of, kind of hinting at another sequel when Candyman really realistically should be dead by the end of this movie if the mirror houses his soul in it when it's busted he should be dead he shouldn't be able to just come back again just cause someone says his name but fuck it <laughs> it's a horror movie but one thing I do like is right when the little girl gets ready to, right when the little girl gets ready to say his name one last time the mom walks in and like grabs her by the mouth and tells her to go to bed you know not letting her say it one last time so it's like you thought Candyman, you thought Candyman was gonna pop up for one last scare, but instead it's actually the mom that stops her, and then the movie goes off. So that's kind of neat. I actually like that. Um, so in a way, it's like hinting not a sequel, but at the same time, it's like you know, in case the movie doesn't do too well, you know, or doesn't make enough profit, we don't have to make one. But as it is, the movie as a whole, it's all right. Get that one really good hook death uh, for the husband character. Everybody else just kind of gets a hook in the back and falls over. Uh, the cop, though, he's the only other good death. I should say there's two good deaths. The cop's death, when he gets killed in the detainment room, he gets, like, lifted up and thrown out the window or whatever and flies down on top of a desk. That was that was good. I like that. But other than those two, everything else was pretty mediocre compared to the first movie. The score, though, once again, done by Philip Glass, is really good. Not great like the first movie. I wouldn't even say really good, but pretty good. The Philip Glass score in this one is pretty good. Not great like the first movie, but pretty good. He doesn't do the third movie, which is a shame. That When I get to that shit fest, I will get to that one. That's easily the worst of the three. I'll just go ahead and say that right now. It's a shitty movie. Uh, I can't wait to review that cocksucking movie and get it out of the way. But yeah, as far as Candyman 2 goes, it's an alright movie. Did it need to be made? No. But at the same time, I'm glad it's made because I wanted more Candyman. I really did. I just wish they would have done something more original instead of just kind of do redoing the same plot of the first movie. Uh, but hey, what the fuck ever. Uh, it's still an all right movie. Do you do you need to? Do you have to watch it? If you if you see the first movie, no. But if you really like the first movie, you can check this one out. It doesn't harm the first movie or hurt it in any way, shape, or form. So yeah, if you really like the first movie, I'd say check it out. It's an all right movie. So I'll see you guys again with Candyman Three.